Thank you for joining us on our daily devotions today. Uh, I want to especially thank you if you are uh, tuning in and you're not part of Westchester Bible Church. Uh, thank you for joining us as well. Uh, there's a good number of you who are not part of our fellowship that are following along with us and blessings to you. We're glad that you're with us and we pray that you are encouraged in our time together. Uh, if you are part of Westchester Bible Church, I would encourage you to, to like this and to share it and uh, encourage others, especially those who are part of our fellowship and beyond uh, who know the Lord as Savior. <clears throat> Today we're going to be in Philippians chapter 4. And we were in verses 4 and 5 yesterday. We will be working on 6 and 7 today. Take a moment to turn in your Bibles to that passage and as well take a moment to pray. Pause the video now and do so and we will join back together in just a minute in Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7. All right, so here we are. I want to jump back to verses 4 and 5 of this chapter just for some context for us. Uh, scripture says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be made known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is a time that even the most mature believer could be susceptible to anxieties. Uh, we see the surrealness of everything that is around us when you drive down or see pictures of the streets of Chicago and they are absolutely bare. Uh, we also drive around the suburbs here and we don't see our neighbors out very much. Uh, everybody is isolated. There's no one at school. Uh, there's nobody at the parks. All of those kinds of things cause this surrealness that the media uh, is building on. Uh, whether that is by design or not is not, not my point today, uh, but they are building on that and there is the possibility of anxieties creeping up in us. And definitely as we begin, we want to understand a prudence about everything that we do. Uh, we want to be wise. James uh, chapter 1 commands us to ask the Lord for wisdom when we are lacking. And, and so we want to be those who pray for wisdom. But there's also this reminder that we pray for wisdom. We are prudent, but we are not anxious. So how do we combat anxieties in this day and age? Well, as we move through this passage, we're going to see three spe uh, specific ways that we ought to be praying. First, Paul says that we are not to be anxious about anything. We don't live in a vacuum, so what do we replace it with? Uh, we replace it with praying, and he says that we are to take everything to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we have specific commands in Scripture, such as we are to pray for our leaders, for our governing officials, that it may go well with us. And so we pray for our leaders, that they would be wise and godly in their decision making, that they would be surrounded by believers who would be those who could speak truth to them, God's truth to them. Uh, we also recognize that we are to be praying for one another and lifting each other up and being concerned for one another. And we can take that a step further in calling one another and encouraging one another as we uh, move through this crisis together. Um, but also the next line then is we take all of those things to the Lord in prayer. The next statement is, and our supplications. These are those uh, personal prayer requests, these that are ours. It is good for us, especially at anxious times, to take our personal prayer requests before the Lord. And so we take our supplications to Him. Uh, those supplications can be intense, uh, such as a, a real illness that we're dealing with. And they may not be so intense, but intense in the moment, such as we're down to no more toilet paper in the house, and uh, we've checked four stores, and there is none to be found. Uh, that's an item for prayer. Rather than allowing the anxieties to creep, let us be those who pray in those moments. Uh, yesterday, we were in small groups together, and uh, as I was with our small group uh, here, we were discussing and talking about the way that the Lord has done this and so many answers to prayer. And it amazes me how many people have brought their supplications before the Lord and found such serious answers in those times which could be anxious times. And God had answered them already. Let us be those who are faithful and obedient in drawing our supplications to the Lord in prayer as well. Also, we are to be those who bring our thanksgiving to the Lord. Uh, even in this time, there are so many reasons to be thankful. 
the and it, there is an opportunity for us to recognize that in the uh, ebb and flow of life in life the way that it was a couple weeks ago we forget the small ways that the Lord has blessed us but the Lord has blessed us and even the very dre- breath that we draw is from him Psalm 139 reminds us that the Lord is the one who numbers our days as I said uh, a week ago it is not the coronavirus that does that the Lord does that and he knows how many days there are before there was even one of them we rest in the sovereignty and the direction and the power of our great God. And so it causes us to recognize, or it ought to cause us to recognize, the reasons that we have to give thanks. One of the great ways we combat anxieties is to praise the Lord for what he is providing for us. And let us be those as believers who do that and, and show that to a lost and dying world around us. Uh, also, we recognize then what Paul says in verse 7. He says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There's a reason Paul could say rejoice at the beginning of verse 4, and again he says rejoice. Uh, That reason is that there's a peace that was Paul's, but was a characteristic of God. Uh, Not that Paul is, in any stretch of the imagination, trying to say that he is divine. In fact, he says it surpasses all understanding. But that peace which is God's can be ours, and that peace of God Uh, is not that which in the moment of elation and then moved away. It is that which sustains and uh, is where we desire to be. And it reminds us that this surpasses all understanding. This is not a human thing. This is not something that our world can experience. There is a great amount of fear. And I've heard a good number of Christians uh, who, unfortunately, I would say a little bit pridefully, uh, say that I don't fear of anything right now. Well, that's good. It is good not to fear. Let's not be prideful in that. But it is good not to fear. It is good not to have anxieties. And uh, we want to be those who say with a sincerity that the coronavirus doesn't cause us to fear. Uh, we serve God who knows all things from the beginning to the end. Uh, he knew about this already. We're giving him thanks. We're taking our supplications when we're tempted to have anxieties. We're praying for others and everything that is going on around, certainly. But we are those who want to be obedient in finding the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Uh, So we will be those, we ought to be those who say, I have no fear of the coronavirus. Uh, What I desire is to pray. And let us be those who pray. And then uh, it stands as a sentinel. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Here in verse 7, it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, this peace then stands... The next phrase, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So not only is the peace of God that which helps us in the midst of crisis, it is more than just that elation that comes in the moment that you find toilet paper on the shelf. It is also that peace which stands as a guard, a sentinel over your heart and your mind in times like these. What a wonderful blessing for us as believers. Again, I would remind you to like and share the daily devotionals together with those that you know. Uh, post them on your wall, and on your Facebook wall, and let others see them and comment on them as well. I'm praying that these are a blessing to you. If they are, let us know. I'll reply down in the, the comment section here on Facebook. Uh, if you're receiving this through the uh, email chain that is going out, just send a quick email and say, yes, these are, these are good and uh, or no, uh, correct them, fix them a little bit. Uh, they're not they're not hitting the mark. But I pray that you have been blessed by them, been encouraged by them today. We anticipate some changes uh, coming up, some new restrictions perhaps today. Our governor kind of gave a, a signal of some of that yesterday. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the Lord does. But we're taking those to our Lord in prayer, and we're not fearing them at all. Instead, uh, we're allowing the peace of God, uh, which surpasses all understanding, to guard our hearts and our minds. So practice that this week. We hope to be able to fellowship with you again on Sunday. We'll see how that goes, Uh, but we're looking forward to seeing the Lord bless you. So may the Lord bless and keep you, uh, keep you safe during this time. Be those who pray and give the glory to the Lord.